Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. A lot of people have been asking what actually happens when dense packing a wall. Well, in this episode, we're going to take a look inside a wall to see what's going on. We're here on a snowy late April day back in the WXTV labs. We're going to talk to Brad here. Hey Brad, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Good. Brad's going to show us some dense packing demonstrations for our technical short here on our plexiglass training wall. When we're talking dense packing walls, we're typically feeding the hose to the extent of the cavity, whether that's all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom, depending on where you're drilling your holes. But to uh, contrast that, we're going to have Brad pull this hose out and start on this far cavity. And we'll just have him insert the hose a couple of inches to fill this hole up and we'll see what we get. So now Brad's going to show a dense packing technique by going from a lower hole. So he's going to feed this hose all the way to the top. And if you don't know the length of your cavity, you know a lot of guys will have their hoses marked out with strips of tape like this and he's going to go ahead and mark it out. Now we have this cavity loose filled, but Brad's not done. He needs to dense pack this. So the hose is still up at the top there, and what he's going to do is he's going to look, listen, and feel for that product to slow a bit. And what that's signifying is that he's getting it packed in and that that end is plugging up. Anytime he notices it labor, he's going to pull the hose out a little bit at a time, dense packing his way all the way down until he hits this hole. So Brad has dense packed this cavity all the way down to the hole, but now he needs to dense pack this section here. So to do that, he has to knife the hose in by turning just the air on and working it way down to the bottom of the cavity. First thing he had to do was to empty out that hose so he dumped all of his product back into the hopper. For this demo, we're using a Force 2, and so we've, we've got our air settings here, and 
Our feed rate, those are of course going to vary based on the type of blow you're doing, the type of material you're using, and just a lot of different factors. For this third stud cavity, Brad's going to go from the center hole. Now really the most efficient way that we've found to do this, you can start it out low or start it out high, but if Brad works that hose all the way to the top, he can loose fill that cavity from one position and then start dense packing his way down, just like we did on that, that uh, second cavity, down to the hole. He'll knife the hose all the way down to the bottom here and then dense pack his way out. So because a situation might require that you drill a hole from up top, Brad's going to show you those same dense pack techniques from this top hole here. So uh, Brad's going to open up this door and let's see what we got. Well, Brad, you don't have to be much of an expert to see the difference here. You've already got a, a void starting on this loose fill cavity and just feeling it, there's a big difference. So you can see how with the dense pack, we're getting air sealing. But to be scientific about this, we're going to have Brad pull the material out of each cavity, weigh it, and see what density we achieved in, in each of these.
Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. To give you an idea of the different densities between loose fill and dense pack, in that first cavity, we only achieved 2.4 pounds per cubic foot, whereas in the other cavities, we had 3.7, 3.9, and 4.1 pounds per cubic foot. It's that second step after the loose fill that prevents gaps and voids that can lead to air movement, heat loss, and condensation issues, limiting the benefits of insulation. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.